Grammy Award-winning country star John Barry is gearing up for the release of a new album in 2021 and the silver anniversary of his Songs and Stories Christmas concert tour. He took advantage of being off the road for the bigger part of 2020 and created new opportunities to continue his reach to his fan base as well as new ones, which we will talk about today. And John released a new video and re-recorded a new single for the graduation song, started a new podcast, Faith, Family, and Friends with John and Robin Berry. And John Berry has placed 20 singles on the country hit parade charts, six of which went top five as well as a number one on the Billboard and Radio and Records country charts. He has earned numerous gold and platinum records. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the amazing country superstar, John Berry, to the show. Welcome to the program. Good to be with you, pal. I appreciate the invitation. Hey, you're very, very welcome. Well, let's begin talking about your career as you celebrate 25 years this year of your Christmas tour. And what are some of your favorite memories that you'd like to share with us? Oh, man, the, the tour has been an extraordinary event for us. I hope it's been that way for those who have come to join us. We, we have had families uh, that come to the tour that started off as a young man with his who was tagging along with his date and her parents coming to the show. And now they're coming with their kids. And because, you know, after doing it 25 years, you know, a lot of families are developing during that period of time. It was, it's, it's a lot of fun. We have a, a particular family in Macon, Georgia. You, uh, in Macon, there's a, a theater there called the Grand Opera House. And it's the one venue that we've played every single year. We've been there, we've been there 24 times. And, um, Looking forward to being back there this year, but there's one family in particular that started coming, a husband and wife and their two little girls. They were five and six years old when they started coming. And now, of course, they're 30 and 31. And uh, one of them got engaged at our show a couple of years ago and uh, just different things that we, we've been uh, a, a large part of their life, our Christmas show and, and them coming to be with us has been a, a very neat thing for their family to do. And, uh, and it means a lot to me as a performer where people come and, and, and what we do means that much to them, you know. So. Well, yeah, Christmas is a, is a very uh, tradition-oriented holiday. And here you've been doing this Christmas tour for 25 years. And I'm sure there are countless of families that really kind of make it part of their yearly traditions for Christmas. And so, you know, you, you bring this tour along and a lot of people are blessed year after year. Yeah, it's a great thing. And to be able to go and sing songs about Jesus' birth, there's nothing better. <laughs> well, I was actually sitting here listening to some of the, uh, the songs on the, uh, the Christmas tour album. And, uh, you know, you hit it out of the park cause you picked out all the favorites. And of course, you know, one of them stands out to me. Mary, did you know what drew you to uh, to record that song? Because I know Mark Lowry wrote it. Yeah, Mark wrote that. Did a tremendous job of it, and w without a doubt, it's the definitive version. We tried to bring something a little bit different to it. Ours is a little more rock, as you might <laughs> you might want to say. It's uh, it's, uh, it's a little more out there, and but it's powerful, and it and it kind of developed because we were doing it in our show before we recorded it. And the band just sort of kind of took off with it a little bit at the end, you know, and the audience just goes nuts. So we figure if they're going to like it live, they're going to like it on a recording. So we went to the studio and we cut it. We cut the song and we just we took kind of took it up a notch. There's no doubt. Well, what which Christmas song is actually your favorite? Which one do you like to sing year after year? Well, that's like asking somebody which one of their children's your favorite, you know. <laughs> uh, I do have to say there's a there's something really special, of course, about Oh Holy Night. That song has been, um, it, it's sort of what has brought this Christmas tour to 25 years is because of that song. Um, it, it's a remarkable piece of music that I've always loved. As a kid, I loved it. And the first time we recorded it, I've only recorded it a few times, actually, but the first time we recorded it was in June of 1994. We had been doing the Christmas show at our church in Athens, Georgia, at Green Acres Baptist Church. 
for a number of years, my wife and I started doing it in around 19, we got married in 1988. We started doing it, I think, at Christmas of 89. And just our church pianist and me and her and our sister-in-law, and you know, a good built over the years. But, but Oh Holy Night was a favorite of, of the congregation. They love to hear me sing that song each year. Well, Chuck Howard, who was the producer of my first record on Capitol Records, had heard us talking about our Christmas show. And we had decided we were going to go in in June of 1994 and record a couple of Christmas songs and see what we had. Just kind of see what was there. Maybe we'd do something in the future. Well, little did we know that on April 10th, I'm sorry, May 10th of 1994, I had to have brain surgery, which I don't recommend unless you really need it. Um, I, I, I really needed it. And uh, I had a cyst in the third ventricle of my brain and they had to go and, and, and get it and clean it out and um, we'll make a very long story short, 30 days later, we were scheduled to go in and record these songs and everybody was wanting to cancel the session. I said, no, no, let's, let's, let's move forward. Let's go. Do, I need the distraction. I need to go do something. So we went to the studio and we recorded O Come Emmanuel and O Holy Night. And something, it was a real emotional day to say the least, to be able to go because you know, there's a video somewhere, I, I, I've got it in my archive someplace, of me on May, the, around, May, around May the 5th, about a week before I had brain surgery, I'm in my office on our farm in, back in Georgia, and I'm recording, I'm singing all my favorite songs. And then I walk around our farm and I talk about the house my wife and I built. I talk about the little shed that I lived in while I bought my first five acres talked about building the barn and parts of the barn that I started off with. And, and because I knew when they got in my head, they were going to find more than they bargained for. And I didn't, you know, didn't know if I'd be singing again, didn't know if I'd remember what all this place was. So I made this video of all this stuff. And then to be, go through the surgery, to go through the initial recovery and to be in the studio recording this beautiful song was so emotional. It was so emotional. And, and, and it obviously wasn't just for me, it was for the players, these people that played on my earlier records, they, they were very sensitive to the facts of the day. Well, Connie Ellisor, the violinist, world-class violinist, was putting on her violin parts and her violin kept going out of tune. And Chuck Howard said, Connie, what, what's wrong with your violin? You're, you never have issues like this. She said, well, I'm sitting here listening to John sing this beautiful song, knowing a month ago we were praying he would survive, much less sing. And she said, I got tears rolling down my face, and they're falling on my violin and make it go out of tune from the wetness and moisture and heat. And we just captured something that day you couldn't manufacture, something you couldn't have thought of, something that just God orchestrates. And we captured this little song that we ended up putting on a CD in that Christmas of 94, sent it out to radio stations, just saying with a card that said, thank you for the love and support during a difficult year. And it got, they started playing it. And it just kind of went crazy. And that song led to 25 years of doing a Christmas tour and us sharing Jesus being born and the hope that he brings. So. Well, how many cities do you tour with uh, for the for the Christmas concert? Uh, not enough. We <laughs> typically do Thanksgiving to Christmas. Uh, this year we're going to have around twenty. Uh, I wish it was more, but you know it's what we have and it's what we get. Of course, with COVID, it's you know last year we only had six. Oh, yeah, just a, just a few, just two weekends. Uh, this year we've got around twenty, twenty-one, I think. And um, so. Uh, and normally it's, you know, normally it's at 20 to 25. So we're sort of in the normal range. And, cool. uh, but it's, a, it's a, so much fun. And year after year, we see families that come and, and friends that we, we get to see once a year. And sometimes we play, uh, most cities we play like every other year, but like I said, Macon, Georgia, we played every year. And then there's a, there's a few that are becoming more regular like that. So, well, okay. So in 1994, you had the brain cancer. And then was it 2018? It was actually a, it was a brain cyst. A brain cyst. Okay. So then in 2018, you were diagnosed with throat cancer, correct? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. What what in the world was that like? Because you being a singer, the throat is everything. When a doctor said it, when he said, you've got throat cancer, I just looked at my wife and said, really? Really? <laughs> Me? I've got throat, you know? And I, and I told her, I said, you know, that night we were talking about the events of the day. And I said, you know, I always believe God, God's just trying to get our attention with all the different things that go on in people's lives. You know, I had vocal cord surgery years ago. I had brain surgery years ago. I got run over by a car, riding a motorcycle. I said, God, I believe he uses these things to get our attention. And she stopped me right there. She said, would you listen this time? <laughs> Please <laughs> listen this time. And I just believe that God wants us to, he wants our attention. He doesn't want us to be distracted by all the things. He just wants us. Yeah. He doesn't want our fame or our money or our house, our big house. He doesn't want our cars, our guitars, our studio equipment. He doesn't want any of that. He just wants me. Yeah. That's all. That, that's it. You know, it, it's funny, John, because every morning when I go through my devotions, I and when I pray, I'm like, Lord, search the motives of my heart. I want to make sure that I am pure of heart and humble before you. And that's how I want to start my day. And, uh, and I think, uh, you know, with you, you had gone through, again, that motorcycle accident, you broke both your legs. And a lot of people don't know that, that story. And then the brain cyst and then, and then the throat cancer. Um, how, what, how did all of that, all of those events evolve in strengthening your faith? Well, they all didn't. You know, uh, they might have for a short period of time. But as this one has come along, there's a couple of things that have been really, really great things have come through this, dif through this hard, difficult time. Um, I always, uh, you know, we live outside of Nashville. We've only been here about five or six years. And, um, and we often it, it thought, talked about the fact that, you know, we moved here. God made it available for us to be here and be closer to the music business. And and to have those opportunities. And I figured out during this time, he didn't move me here for the music business. He moved me here for the Jesus business. So he and I could do business. He got I us, he moved us here, moved us here to Gallatin and just down the road in Hendersonville, Tennessee is Long Hollow Baptist Church on Long Hollow Pike, Hendersonville, where we're members. We've, we've been, we've become more involved in this church in the short time we've been here, than all of our church life, me and my wife, and uh, we, we're in, we're in a, I'm in a men's group. She's in a ladies group. We're in a church life group, and we're in in, in in corporate worship. And it's a wonderful church, and it just feeds our spiritual need. And uh, and so God has really used it, and, and that's why we're here. You know, God brought us here for that. And well, you... the, the fact it's music business. That's just all secondary. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you, let me ask you a question that kind of brings both of them together. Now, you recently recorded a new project with infamous producer Steve Dorf. And can you share some of the backstories on that music and how this came about? Well, this is an album I've wanted to do for a long, long time. And I, I don't know why it never happened, but timing is everything. You know, God's timing is not our timing. And uh, Steve Dorf. Uh, some of your listeners and viewers may not know who he is, but they know his songs. He has a book. He's written so many songs. He has a book called, Yeah, I Wrote That One Too. I mean, lots and lots of hit songs. Uh, Barbara Streisand songs and Celine, uh, uh, Celine Dion songs and Garth Brooks songs and all this music, George Strait songs. And um, he is managed by my manager. And we just started talking about uh, talking with with Brian Smith, my manager, uh, about about the possibilities of doing a, a collection of hymns and some new faith based songs, but doing it in a way that was like my earlier Christmas albums, just beautiful music, not trying to fit, not trying to be a twenty two year old fitting into contemporary Christian radio. That ain't me. It might be my kids. That's not me. And I just need to do what I do. 
um, I need to sing beautiful songs with beautiful arrangements, with beautiful, beautiful orchestration and band, and sing it as beautifully as I can. And so we found, we, we selected six of the most well-loved, most loved hymns. And we ended up finding four new faith-based songs, several of them that Steve Dorff wrote. What's interesting about Steve is he brings such fresh ears to these hymns. Steve is a Jewish guy from New York City. Well, he's lived in Cal yeah, he lived in New York, from New York. Lived in, he, he didn't see a tree until he went to the University of Georgia when he was at, you know, late teens, early 20s to go to school. He hadn't seen a forest. <laughs> oh, wow. You know? And uh, he didn't, you know, uh, Blessed Assurance and How Great Thou Art were foreign music to him. He did not grow up hearing these songs. And he heard, Great is Thy Faithfulness. He goes, oh my gosh, that's the one of the most beautiful melodies I've ever heard before. So when he wrote the string arrangements for these songs, he had fresh ears to this music and gave it a breath of life like, like no arrangements I've ever heard. It, it's quite lovely. You know, you and have the voice, in. though. You see, John, you have that voice that works so well with an orchestra, with a string section. And not everybody has that. You know, we, we you know, there are guys out there, even in, in girls that have, you know, they got a, a perfect voice for country. You have a voice that is so well-rounded for different genres of music, but I can really see it. Cause when I would, I, when I was listening to some of the Christmas songs, I can see where your voice works perfectly with certain hymns with an orchestra it's just a it's just a well a match made in heaven is the way i look at it well i tell you uh, if, if if this is the last project i ever do i i i'm with steve's help and god's grace we were able to accomplish something really quite remarkable with this album um some of the songs they just when the strings come in on great is our faithfulness it just brings me almost to tears every time i hear it it's just beautiful, and and that's what I wanted it to be. I wanted, and I, and I wanted to record songs that uh, you don't hear a lot anymore. There's so, there's a lot of great new praise and worship music. That's what a lot of the churches do, and the ones that do the old hymns, maybe they're not as well orchestrated and beautifully done as some of the other songs are. And I wanted to give them that due respect of, of just being just put out there in such a glorious way. And uh, so I'm really thrilled. Uh, I can't wait till people get to, to, to hear what we've done and what Steve was able to accomplish with it. We did um, piano, some, some of the songs have piano, a little bit of bass and drums, some acoustic guitars. I think one or two have maybe a little bit of electric guitars, but then there's 45 string players. Oh. So it's just thick. And then there's also, uh, there's a small choir that joins us on a number of the songs. And then the four new songs, um, uh, Something Bigger Than Me, which is a remarkable song that Steve uh, was a writer on, and uh, Find My Joy Again, which Steve also wrote. And uh, there's a song that um, was a, a hit song at Christian Radio a number of years ago, maybe 11 years ago. Oh, her name just went right out of my head. And the song titles went right out of my head. <laughs> Brain surgery kicking in. Oh, well, when is, when is Find My Joy Again album coming out? Uh, well, we were, we were hoping to put it out by Christmas, but it looks like we have a major label that is going to pick it up. Oh, and, praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. It's a, it's a wonderful organization, a wonderful group of people. As soon as things are finalized on that, we'll know more. So we're, my guess is in the first quarter of, of 2022. And uh, if that doesn't come together, then we'll have it out on Christmas tour this year. But the way things are all laid out, the way things seem to be, it looks like everything's going to move forward. And it'll be uh, the end of first quarter, beginning of second quarter of 2022. And, now, are you going to be singing any of these songs during the Christmas tour? 
I think we're going to do one or two. Um, uh, we're going to do a, fu a crowdfunding campaign to pay for the project to date. Um, we, it's, it's really going you know, to be being this scale of musicians, number of musicians and studio size and all of the expense has been pretty extraordinary. So I think we're going to go, we, we've done crowdfunding on most of the albums we've done in recent years. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun. I think one of the things I enjoy most about it is the fact that we have a small group of three, 400 people who are in on it from the beginning and they get, they get clips of songs as they're being recorded and we have almost all of them done. Almost everything's completely finished now. And, but they can, um, we'll be sending them clips. We'll get to hear things early and, uh, they'll be able to participate and build that excitement, that ground level, that groundswell of excitement with this group of three or 400 folks that usually do participate in the crowdfunding. And uh, it, it, it'll, it'll build some serious momentum for release. So. What do you hope the listeners will take away when listening to the new album? I hope it will refresh their relationship with Christ. That's what I'm after. I hope it will remind them of a time in their life when Christ had a fire in their heart. I don't want it to conjure up fond memories going to church with grandma. That's not what I'm after. That, that, that's cool and everything, but that's not what true Christianity is. It's not a good feeling. Christianity is a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm after. I want people to I want it to be a cause to go deeper. You know, uh, uh, I'm not a. I'm. I, I, I'll, I'll be straight up. I'm not. The, I'm not a real deep, deep dive guy. Um, I, I don't. I'm not one of the guys who learned to read a lot in school. I'm. I'm not a bookworm. I don't. You know, I. I, I do some Bible study as much as I. I didn't go to college, so I don't have a full understanding of how how to really study things. Um, but I do know I, I, I love my creator and I love my Christ who died on a cross for me. I know that. And I, I want, I want to have as close a relationship with him as I can. I want him to be in my life in every aspect of my life. I want him to go on walks with me or the dog in the park every day, you know, and, and we can talk about the day and what's going on and how he can use me. And, um, but I, I just, I want it, I want it to, uh, I hope it will conjure up in people's hearts that fire that they have when they first came to know him and rekindle that and, and, and make it burn. Well, I think the title, the title of the album is perfect. Find my joy again. And I think a lot of people need to find their joy again. And we can, and we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength, and that's exactly where we can find our joy again, is in Him. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you this. Now, I know you and your wife, Robin, have a new podcast called Faith, Family, and Friends. So what has been the best thing about you asking the questions and learning about your guest? Well, just you know how their faith, their family, and their friends have influenced not only their careers, but also have influenced just their day-to-day -day life. It's been really fun to see how, uh, how different people have, uh, their, their family's been involved in their career and been involved in, in their day-to-day -day life, uh, how their friends have helped drive their careers down the road and, and point them in the right direction, open doors for them and, 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 and in, in their careers and in their, in their life. But then also, how, more importantly, how Christ has factored into that and, and that daily prayer life for, for uh, guidance from him and what we should do with our life. And, and, and uh, certainly we want to have a career. We want to have uh, uh, resources to take care of our family and, and those that depend on us. But we also want to live a life that is glorious to God. So, and, but it's been so, uh, I, I, I think we, we've we had a number of remarkable uh, conversations with people None more so than with the late Charlie Daniels. Mm. Um, we, we visited with Charlie Daniels on July 1st, and he passed away on July 6th. And wow. in the first, the first 15 minutes of that conversation, he talked about his love for being at his farm with his sweet Hazel 
at Twin Pines Farm in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. But the only place he was looking forward to being more so than at Twin, Pine, Twin Pines Farm, he spoke of being in heaven three times in the first 15 minutes. And I, I just got just chills. <laughs> wow. That. that, you know, I, I always followed Charlie on, on social media. And, you know, he was a guy, it was, it was Jesus up front. It wasn't Charlie Daniels. It was Jesus first. And, um, I'm going to have to listen to that interview because that is, I mean, just to mention heaven three times. And I think we need to have that mentality, you know, as believers, we need to have the mentality to look forward to heaven. And I think a lot of people kind of put heaven on a back burner says, I'll, I'll get there when I get there. But we need to have that yearning to to look for it. I mean, the oh, Apostle yeah. Paul, that's all he looked forward to. Yeah. Yeah, he he talked about how much he loved. Uh, he loves the fans, those folks who, who enjoyed his music so much and how grateful he was for them. Talked about his love for Hazel. They've been married for so many years and his son, Charlie Jr. And what a glorious life God had given him uh, here on this earth and the blessing of the Twin Ponds Ranch. Uh, there in Mount Juliet that he's lived for so many years and 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 his joy that it brings him just to walk through the woods over there and and uh, the pond there by their by their cabin and 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 all that but he said it just doesn't compare to what I'm going to experience in heaven he said I cannot wait to see so it's just it's a glorious conversation and and uh, it was just it was uh, pretty overwhelming when we found out just a few days later that that he had passed. He was looking forward to it. And, uh, I think, I think the Lord took him at his word. (laughs) You know, Charlie certainly loved the Lord. There's no doubt. Amen to that. Well, let me ask you this, John, because you have a very long storied career and, you know, I interview so many new upcoming artists. What kind of advice do you have for all of those out there that want to get into the music business and they're, they're working hard, but what kind of advice do you have for them? Oh, my wife always says, don't say that, but I have to say it. It's going to end. Plan on it ending. There are a few that like, like, like our friend, Charlie Daniels, who it, it kept rolling his whole life. Garth Brooks, Reba McIntyre. Does it? There's a handful that get that blessing. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. But for most of us, we have a time when we go and and we're we're blessed to have a level of success, and it it, it falls off. There's not that. It, it takes a lot of time, resources, and people to maintain a career like that. Huge amount of finances to maintain something like that. So for, for most of us, we have this, this ebb and flow of a career and you have to be prepared for that. Uh, there, there's my, my wife said there's a, there's a song in the fall. You said it best because a lot of these artists that I talk to do not realize that they're, they never look at that their career could end. And, you know, everybody looks at the, the few that have, made it like, and you mentioned Charlie Daniels, Reba, Garth Brooks. I mean, there's George Strait and not everybody gets to that level. And, you know, I think a lot of people, they need to start planning, but you, you give the best advice, you know, sooner or later it's going to end and just be prepared for it. And, you know, put back a financial nest egg for whatever you make. I think and don't blow it all at the, at the beginning of the career. Yeah. Years ago, a gentleman that I worked with, and I didn't quite understand what he was saying at the time, but I certainly do now. He said, treat every dollar like it's the last one you're going to make. Because one day, it will be the last one you make. And you don't know when that's going to come, you know. Uh, you know, we were we were floating along out there. We were riding high, and we were working hard and all the time. And all of a sudden, 2008, in September, the stock market crashed, and there was nobody hiring singers. <laughs> Let me tell you. You know, there are... People were just trying to get by, put on a show, and uh, so you have to you have to really treat every every single show like it's 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 a gift and and every every opportunity to work and every every chance to to uh, uh, to earn a, a living a gift and 
and treat it as such. You know, you really have to. Well, <clears throat> well, John, I encourage all of my listeners, all of my viewers to, to go check out and celebrate the 25th anniversary of Christmas with John Barry, the Silver Anniversary Tour. And what is the start date for that tour, John? It'll be Saturday after Thanksgiving. Is that the 27th? I believe so. I think so. I'm not positive. Um, but, and we're going to be up in uh, uh, North Carolina. Um, I, I, I don't have my schedule by memory, by chance. But I know we're going to be in North Carolina that, that Friday, uh, uh, sorry, Saturday after Thanksgiving and uh, kicking it off. And, and uh, we've got about, like I said, around 20, 21 cities that we're going to be visiting. Uh, most of them um, east of the Mississippi. Uh, I think they all are pretty, pretty much this year. But we are going as far as uh, Wisconsin and up uh, uh, Michigan and kind of Pennsylvania and points all around that central, central east or east coast, I guess you might say. Well, I'm also excited about the upcoming release of your faith-based album, Find Joy Again. And I'm going to make sure that I let all of my listeners and my viewers know when that album comes out. So please let me know so we can give everybody the, uh, the upcoming release date because we really want to promote that for you, John. And I cannot wait to hear your beautiful voice singing those beautiful songs. And I know it's going to be a blessing. And I'm going to stand in, agree agree I'm going to stand in agreement with you that when people hear this album, Find My Joy Again, that they will surely find their joy again, and they'll have a much closer relationship to Jesus. That's good stuff. I appreciate that. Well, you're welcome, brother. And uh, I want to thank you for coming on to my show, the Dr. Ward Bond Show. And, uh, and for all of you out there listening and watching, go to johnberry.com. It's right there on the screen, johnberry.com. Buy the Christmas album. Get ready to find my Joy Again album. Check out all of John's music and listen to his podcast, Faith, Family, and Friends. You can't get better than that. So, John, again, thank you for honoring us with your presence today. Thank you. Sure good to be with you. Well, thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, you better stay with me because I've got more right after this.